The granola arc introduced us to a lot of things we've never seen the like of in Dragon Ball. Like Ultra Ego Vegeta, a new power-up for the Saiyan Prince which amplifies the natural abilities of Saiyan adaptation along with full mastery of the destruction technique, which he doesn't use that much. We are also introduced to Gas, who shows us the curse of being the strongest in the universe as his body deteriorates more and more the stronger he gets. Goku also manages to advance his Ultra Instinct even further by overcoming the weakness of tranquility being required for the technique to properly function. And finally, we were introduced to the topic of Ultra Ego Vegeta versus Ultra Instinct Goku, which began very early on in the arc before even Gas pulled up on anyone. In this video, I'm going to describe my best who wins here and how that has changed over the course of the arc, because it has changed a lot, like, you'd know if you kept up with the arc. But without further ado, who wins? Ultra Instinct Goku or Ultra Ego Vegeta? After Goku and Vegeta hear of Granola from the heaters, they head off to Planet Serial with their newfound power-ups and take on Granola the strongest in the universe. Goku tries fighting him using Super Saiyan God and Blue, and stacks Ultra Instinct on top of that, which increases its accuracy. Goku does manage to put up a decent fight, but ends up needing to use complete Ultra Instinct to take care of Granola, which he does rather casually. However, Granola reveals that what Goku has been fighting is just a clone, which he then dissipates. The real Granola then quickly takes care of Completed Ultra Instinct Goku in one hit. However, since Completed Ultra Instinct has a massive stamina drain, Goku is most likely not at full power, which is supported later by a statement from Toyotaro, which I'll bring up again later on the video. With Goku out of the way, Vegeta steps in to face a full power Granola with Super Saiyan Blue Evolution, in which he actually does surprisingly well. He manages to fend off Granola's attacks and even lands a few on his own and increases his strength on top of that due to being a Saiyan. Now if you don't believe in the argument that Goku was exhausted here or caught off guard by Granola, then feel free to use it to say that Vegeta surpassed completed Ultra Instinct Goku here, but even if he did, this definitely changes later on as I'll show you later. Granola catches on to Vegeta's increase in strength and attempts to kill him, but fails which ends up with Vegeta showing off his newfound transformation that he acquired through his training with Beerus, Ultra Ego. For once, Vegeta's ego might be left unshattered here, as he does start bullying Granola pretty hard, with the few hits that Granola does land end up strengthening Vegeta here rather than hurting him. Even the so-called strongest in the universe ends up shitting himself and attempts to shield himself with a barrier, which, as a reminder, needs to have double the key of your opponent's attacks to negate them. The barrier does work initially, but due to Vegeta's ever-increasing power and battle soul, he breaks his limits yet again and shatters the barrier, meaning he more than likely doubled his strength in that instant. Toyotaro then makes a comment on Ultra Ego Vegeta, saying that he is equal to Goku in strength, which probably does mean that Goku got off-guarded by Granola earlier. Either that, or he was just exhausted. Either one is fine. Unfortunately for Vegeta, Granola begins to properly control his power and overwhelms Vegeta and temporarily defeats the Saiyan Prince. Goku then steps back in and starts swapping hands with Granola in blue. Not Omen, not complete Ultra Instinct, blue. Which is something Vegeta couldn't do with his powered up Ultra Ego. So if blue is doing this against Granola, then it's pretty clear Ultra Instinct Goku would have easily dispatched him, meaning that Goku should have exceeded Vegeta again here. Besides another little scuffle with Granola, Vegeta really doesn't get much action for a while, or at least not anything relevant, as the story becomes the Goku manga for a while. After Gash shows up and basically spanks Granola after he masters his inner nature, Goku, thanks to Vegeta's donation of energy, manages to turn into a Super Saiyan Blue and is at least capable of somewhat keeping up with a fighter stronger than a full power granola. Now some detractors like to claim that Gas was somehow holding back here, which I don't know where they are getting this from, especially since in the same scene where they are fighting, 
Goku and the Galactic Prisoners are literally bullying this beta male NPC for pissing himself like a bitch. With Goku even saying later on he smells like shit and needs to take a bath in a river. Which ends up with Gas throwing a tantrum. In which I ask you, if Gas is super pissed at Goku and has full intent to kill him, why would he be holding back here? Any answers? Anyone? Put your hand down! Stop it. Yeah. So Gas is probably not holding back here. Further making this weird blue Goku scaling consistent. Yeah, I don't know, Toritaro is weird sometimes with these massive amps. Don't ask me. Anyway, Blue Goku manages to trick Gas and teleports back to Planet Serial, in which him and Vegeta are healed to full power by Minaito and once again take on Gas. In the rematch, they both perform about equally against him, as they are both able to take attacks from Gas and are capable of fighting alongside one another in said battle. However, due to Ultra Ego's adaptation abilities, he quickly exceeds Goku by being able to take on a full power gas, with him being even visibly concerned by even the attacks of a beat up Vegeta. However, Vegeta's body ended up giving out on him, leading to Goku taking on gas with his newfound true Ultra Instinct form. Thanks to this newfound power up, Goku manages to surpass gas which results in a Lex scolding Gas and revealing us one of the side effects of Gas becoming the strongest in the universe. That being, whenever he is surpassed, he gets a power boost that ends up making him older. Which may explain how Gas jumped from Blue Goku level to above completed Ultra Instinct Goku and Ultra Ego Vegeta. This powered up Gas, named Burning Gas by the fandom, easily ends up fending off true Ultra Instinct Goku but with assistance from Granola and Vegeta, this so-called burning gas is defeated. But the motherfucker is hard to get rid of. Kinda like how it's hard for Dre to get rid of his obsession with Discord drama. Anyway, Gas basically turns into a zombie and fights a rejuvenated Goku and Vegeta. However, this is where things get interesting, as Vegeta has once again caught to Goku as they are shown having both relative travel and combat speed, as well as the fact that they are both able to damage and take hits from Gas. And with this fight out of the way, we have reached the end of the relevant events for these two. Okay, so Cell, who wins then? Well, since they are pretty much equal in power and speed, let's take a look at their abilities. Vegeta has a supercharged ability of Saiyan Adaptation on top of having full mastery over destruction energy. His Ultra Ego form basically seems to drain little to no stamina as he can maintain it with blood gushing out of his head and only deformed out of it due to his body taking too much damage. Not really because of any sort of stamina problem. Goku with his true Ultra Instinct state has the God Bind which can paralyze people. It also allows his body to get progressively harder, pause, as needed, although not to the same extent as Vegeta's. He also has this weird Susano form, which he can use to pin down opponents or launch them. Okay, so with their abilities out of the way, who wins? Well, there's no 100% objective answer to this, but if I had to give an answer, I'd say Vegeta most likely wins, mainly due to his massive stamina advantage stacked on top of just a blatantly better adaptation ability. Even if Goku had a better adaptation ability, that wouldn't matter too much because True Ultra Instinct consumes way too much stamina for that to help. Goku's God Bind may allow Goku to get some good hits in on Vegeta, but all that's gonna do is strengthen the print, so that ain't gonna work. Goku's only real chance here in my eyes is that weird Susano form, which he might be able to use to beat down Vegeta, but this technique doesn't really seem to be combat centered, it's more so like a technique to pin dudes down or trap them, as shown with Moro and Gas. So for now, Vegeta takes this W, but if you disagree, I'd like for you to tell me why in the comments. I'd love to hear back from you guys. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you like that content, please hit that subscribe button and bell, and look out for my next video.
I'll try not to be lazy and get the next one out sooner. <laughs> Later, guys.